I uh, want to acknowledge the invitation by uh, the um, center, the institution representing the CAPE Higher Education Consortium and to the Center for Higher uh, Education Transformation that initiated my current visit to South Africa. Um, and certainly to the University of Cape Town in this particular case, it's actually the first time that uh, the University of Cape Town has invited me and therefore the first time I came. Um, <laughs> my lecture, Cities and Development, um, will be of analytical character. Um, so I will not go into the specifics of uh, such or such situation, certainly not into the specifics of uh, the Cape Town metropolitan area, because I, I think would be arrogant on my part, uh, given my limited knowledge, not complete ignorance, but limited knowledge on the situation. And also a number of people were interested in, um, in knowing my, my views or my comments on uh, the, what has been sometimes called um, the Barcelona model and the situation in Barcelona. This I know better, um, but um, I, I would rather uh, see what specifically interests you from the Barcelona situation and from the Barcelona model. And therefore, I would welcome in the discussion both questions and comments and suggestions about both Cape Town and Barcelona, trying to land some of this problematic uh, that I will first try to uh, present to your consideration. Uh, let me start by saying that throughout history, cities had been both the engines of creation of wealth and the sites of power, and therefore the appropriators of wealth of most of the wealth generated. And this is because uh, cities had been always the um, major uh, systems, actually communication systems, uh, that um, induce innovation, generate knowledge, and process information effectively. Um, it is not recent that knowledge and information are the decisive uh, factors for uh, economic and social development. They always have been. What is specific to our society is the extent and development of uh, information and communication technologies, uh, not the, the decisive character of knowledge and information. And not because uh, they are not decisive now, because they were decisive always. And because knowledge and information are concentrated and generated in uh, spatial agglomeration, particularly large-scale spatial agglomerations, cities always had been the fundamental uh, engines of growth, innovation, and human progress. And this has been actually very well uh, explained by, by Peter Hall in his major book, Cities in Civilization, going throughout the history and showing this particular role of cities, particularly for the largest cities. However, uh, therefore, to, to understand the, the, the development, it actually means to understand cities as sources of development. Um, but this requires to situate this analysis in the historical and cultural context of um, the specific spatial forms of each society. And for this, we need to reassess the role of cities and development in the current context of an information and communication technology revolution and the formation of global networks of appropriation and distribution of wealth, which are globally organized and locally um, developed. So I will first try to um, understand the combination between globalization and uh, metropolitanization uh, as a, the key global architecture of our planet in terms of our spatial forms. I will try to then uh, analyze the reasons for why spatial concentration is so extraordinarily important. 
And then I will show the urban and environmental contradictions and economic contradictions of the model of full metropolitanization of society and ending with some of the implications on urban policies and urban planning uh, on the basis of this analysis. But we'll be in the 40 minutes that uh, uh, we were um, promised. Uh, for, first of all, the, one of the paradoxes of our time is in the midst of the largest uh, and deepest telecommunication and communication revolution in history, we are also witnessing the largest wave of urbanization in history. Um, and that uh, was not supposed to happen according to the futurologies. If you have telecommunications, if you have internet, if you have all these uh, possibilities, why to be all concentrated? I'll come to this in a moment, but starting empirically, um, we, at this point, the, uh, we are, uh, we already crossed last year, uh, at the end of 2008, the threshold of 50% of the urban population in the planet for the first time in history. And we are moving fast toward uh, about 60% in 2020 and about 75% in 2050. Um, of course, uh, this is not only in the developed regions. Uh, Latin America has been over 80%, South America, Mexico is over 75% urban, but South America has been, uh, in the last 10 years, already over 80% uh, urban. Uh, when, when people think about Brazil, they see Amazonia and they see all this rurality. Well, Brazil is 85% urban. Um, much more than the United States at this point. So anyway, our planet is an urban planet, and will, and, but of one particular spatial form, which is the, what I call the metropolitan region. The metropolitan region is not simply a big city or a big urban agglomeration. It's a much more specific uh, area, which is characterized by the constant concentration of population and activities in, in, a, in settlements that are very large scale, but much more important than the scale and the size, is the fact that they incorporate all kind of activities. It's not any longer a, the notion of uh, manufacturing or services. It's, at the same time, agricultural production into these mega areas. It's, at the same time, um, spatial settlement of different kinds scattered over a very large area. And this is not in the old notion of city center and then the periphery uh, that depending on cultures and institutions, it's a middle class suburban periphery of a poor uh, periphery. It's a multi-sectoral, multi-zonal, multi-center region of a very large scale in which there, you don't have any more one big center, but many different centers. And centrality is distributed as activities are distributed. Uh, this has been shown for a long time already in the developing world. Uh, but lately, precisely, Peter Hall and, and Kathy Payne published a very important book on, uh, called The Polycentric Metropolis, an empirical analysis of the major metropolitan areas in Europe showing that this old notion of the center and the semi-periphery and the periphery has disappeared. It's, these are gigantic regions. We have many different centers. Of course, the city of London is, is, is critical for, for the financial function, but many other uh, functions are scattered in, in different areas. The high-tech uh, development, of course, is in the M4 corridor between the central London and the airport, and, and universities are distributed, um, and, and settlements are distributed by income, by class, but not all concentrated in one particular area. So uh, the, the, the key point here is to understand that the metropolitan region is the spatial form of our age. And this does not coincide anymore with cities. Or in other words, if you want, this is our kind of city, which has nothing to do historically uh, with the cities that were before. This is also true, by the way, of, the, uh, of Barcelona. Everybody has this nice Polish image of Barcelona, uh, 
uh, one and a half million pe people city, very human in a scale, uh, dense uh, culture, uh, where apparently there are no poor people, like no workers, and no nothing. Well, point is, uh, the metropolitan region is what is the real unit. And the metropolitan area, which is smaller than the metropolitan region, which is the functionally interrelated area, the metropolitan area in Barcelona is 4 million people uh, scattered over a, a very large area. And the metropolitan region is what uh, is called now in the urban circles in Barcelona, Catalonia City, which is the entire Catalonia, 95%, uh, uh, which is a, about Catalonia in total is 7.4 million people. But uh, the, the, what is functionally interrelated and with uh, travel distances under uh, two hours, it's seven million people that go from the border to the south, where Catalans and Valencians fight for identity, uh, to the north to France. Uh, so there are no, there's no border anymore, but uh, there is uh, clearly some geographical differentiation. And you take the uh, the most important city to the north, very close to the French border, Girona, uh, which is a very rich, it's actually the richest city in, in, in Spain and, and certainly in Catalonia. Um, Girona now is with the, uh, the new high-speed train that will over, be there, it's already in Barcelona, will be there in, in, in two years, is 20 minutes from the center of Barcelona. Uh, so that is critical to understand that this system is not anymore one central city. It's a system of cities within an integrated metropolitan region, which is functionally interrelated. And people live in those spaces. Like they live in those spaces in the, in the southeast metropolitan region of England, in the, in the Paris metropolitan area, and, and in the Ruhr, in the Randstad, but also, of course, in Buenos Aires, in Sao Paulo, in Mexico City, which are very large, but that's not the important thing, is that they are interrelated within the same area. Um, the largest area is uh, it's, uh, the, the uh, Guangdong, uh, Guangdong, Hong Kong, Shenzhen, Macau, Bay River Delta region, which at this point has uh, a population in functionally integrated about, about 55 million people. Uh, but again, it's, it's not all compact. It's, it's distributed in, in, in different areas with different connections. Uh, and it doesn't reflect the, the division between manufacturing and rurality. Most of the manufacturing jobs in that area is in the Pearl River Delta, in rural areas, where there are 8 million manufacturing jobs that produce much of the stuff that you are wearing today and you will wear in the future. Um, so we have to start, of course, the, the, the region where I spent half of my life now, uh, Los Angeles. People again think Los Angeles. Well, Los Angeles, in fact, is not Los Angeles. It's a, it's a continuous, continuous urbanization with spots of agricultural land, with uh, open space, with forests that burn regularly because they cannot stand the, the, the demographic pressure of people living there. That region is about uh, 20 million people nowadays. And of course, integrates Tijuana across the border from Mexico, uh, which is completely functional, uh, really functionally related to the San Diego and, and to the rest of the side. So you, you, you get the idea. But the, it, the critical thing is that these metropolitan regions are connected between them uh, in global networks of multimodal connection and communication. They are all connected. So all the, the wealth, investment, power of the planet is being sucked into these metropolitan regions that are connected and are leaving the rest of the planet increasingly depopulated, disinvested, and abandoned, literally, but under their strong influence. Okay? So that, that's the double movement. Concentration of everything in these metropolitan regions, connection between the metropolitan regions, and increasing depopulation of the rest of the planet. Um, now, why, uh, and, 
And these global networks are multi-layered networks. They are networks for manufacturing, networks for advanced services,